Let me pull you straight into the kind of wartime ingenuity that makes every serious historian grin. There was a moment in the 1940s when winter hit like a hammer, fuel vanished into ration books, and power outages rolled across cities like unwelcome ghosts. Yet inside some homes, radiators still hissed softly with warmth. No electricity, no pump, no fancy tech. Just a system so elegantly simple that it turned cold, desperate nights into survivable ones. And here's the twist. Very few people today even know it existed. This wasn't some improvised miracle. It was a physics-driven hack born out of World War II pressure and civilian grit. And if you understand it the way households back then understood it, you walk away with a blackout-proof off-grid heating method that works flawlessly right now in a modern home using nothing but gravity and smart plumbing. How civilians revived a centuries-old trick when the power grid became unreliable. Once the bombings began and fuel trucks stopped rolling, the priority became survival with whatever people had on hand. Coal deliveries came late or didn't come at all. Oil was rationed so tightly that even lighting a stovetop felt like committing a crime. And winter didn't care. The answer wasn't a new invention. It was the revival of thermosiphon heating, what folks back then casually called letting the loop run itself. No pump, no wiring, no switches to fail when the lights flickered out for the tenth time that week. Thermosiphon circulation works because hot water rises and cold water sinks. That's it. Civilians realized that if they rearranged their pipes so that heated water naturally climbed upward into a radiator, then cooled slightly and fell back down to the stove or boiler, the entire loop moved without a single moving part. As long as there was a temperature difference, the system ran like clockwork. During World War II, simplicity was power. During the 1940s crunch, households built gravity-fed radiator loops in ways that really showed the wartime mindset. People didn't just pop over to the hardware store, they scavenged. Radiators came from condemned buildings, copper piping was salvaged from old factories, and stoves were retrofitted with handmade water jackets. Honestly, whatever they could patch together safely became their lifeline. The rule was always the same. Height mattered more than anything else. The heat source, usually a stove, sat low, often down in the basement. The radiator, on the other hand, was placed high, maybe on the main floor or near a window and you had to make sure the piping rose steadily with absolutely no dips. Just one sag in the line or a single trapped air bubble, and the whole circulation would stall. So families got creative. In small cottages where there wasn't a basement, people would actually dig pits so the stove could sit lower than the room's radiators. In multi-room homes, they built what they called hot zones, a single loop that warmed two or three rooms, rather than trying to heat the entire house. That kind of strategic thinking, honestly, is what kept pipes from freezing and families from waking up to frost in their bedrooms. Forced air furnaces, you know, they blast heat in these quick bursts but a gravity loop system delivers the opposite slow, steady radiance. The heat really lingers. The water moves silently, and the stove burns only enough fuel to keep the loop alive. Civilians maximized every calorie of heat. 
They insulated pipes using old blankets or maybe even scrap wool. They placed radiators under windows to kill cold drafts the moment they entered. They tightened living spaces with curtains or partitioned off rooms to trap warmth around sleeping areas. Fuel shortages didn't crush them. They forced better design. How you can recreate this wartime heating method today? Here's where the past meets survivalist value. You can build a modern version of this system without complicated equipment. The core requirements, they never changed. You need a low-set heat source, like a basement wood stove with a water jacket, an upward-sloping supply line feeding radiators, a downward-sloping return line, a radiator higher than the stove, a safe open vent or header tank to prevent pressure buildup, and insulated pipes to keep temperatures stable. Set those correctly and the loop runs itself. No power, no pumps, no electronics. Just physics. Now let's walk through a real example you could actually use in a survival or off-grid setup. So imagine you're in a two-room cabin after a severe winter storm. The grid goes down, your battery bank is running low, and your solar panels are, well, buried under snow. You light a small wood stove that's fitted with a simple water jacket. As the stove heats up, the hot water rises through a copper pipe and flows into a radiator installed up in the loft. There, it cools just a bit, sinks, and then returns down the second pipe back to the stove. And that's really all there is to it. The loop just runs continuously, even if your power never comes back. What's remarkable is that your fuel stretches dramatically because you don't have to burn hot or fast. This loop rewards low, steady heat. And since gravity, well, it never fails, the whole system keeps going while everything else sits cold and dead. Here's another example. Let's say you have an off-grid retreat that relies mostly on solar power. Cloudy weeks can absolutely drain your battery reserves, but a gravity loop feeding radiators from an insulated water tank gives you heat without using a single watt. This is what we call layered survival. Modern technology, backed by wartime engineering that's been proven under real danger. So, why does this forgotten system still outperform modern heating during blackouts? Well, modern homes rely so much on pumps, sensors, thermostats and electronic controls. When the grid fails, all of that goes with it. But the wartime gravity loop just keeps moving. There's nothing in it to break. It doesn't freeze because circulation continues as long as there's even a little bit of heat. It doesn't explode because it vents naturally through an open system. And it doesn't need service technology, spare parts, or computer diagnostics. It just works, just like it did during the harshest winters of World War II. And this really is why homesteaders still use it, why survivalists study it, and why history enthusiasts like us appreciate it not just as nostalgia, but as a fully functional method built with brains, not brute force. If this deep dive into forgotten wartime engineering taught you something valuable, do consider subscribing to History HQ. Share this guide with other enthusiasts and help keep these skills alive for the next generation of historians and survivalists.